ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Degeneration X. Another. Oh. What's that? Degeneration X proudly breaks the U. <laughs> Degeneration X. Welcome to another live edition or semi live edition of the Brody and Bridget Show, the only show where protein shake is not code for getting your own seed shot in your eye. My name is Brody. With me, as always, is my lovable co-host, Richard. Your hetero life mate. <laughs> my hetero life mate. Richard, how are you today, sir? I, I gotta tell you, number one, fuck Alabama. Number two, <laughs> I, I'm just at this point now where, like, I, you know what? The world's on fire. It's a dumpster. We hey. didn't start the fire. Yeah, no, that's how I feel right now. I'm I'm actually in a really good mood. It could be the fact that I'm partially drunk and I'm partially got a butt plug, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, so today's like we're talking about horrible sex stories, right? Yeah, that was kind of like uh if for anyone who is anybody who listened to the last, last episode. live episode that me and Richard did, we one, ended on a very Well, I guess it'd be one fifty seven since the one we just did just it will be up before this. So it's one fifty seven. Okay. So if you go back and listen to episode 157, the whole show kind of ends on the story of the first time I ever got a blowjob. And it, it's pretty horribly for me, um, for the most part. But then me and Richard decided, like, that's what we're going to talk about for our next show. Our horrible, like, war stories and uh, sex stories and things of that nature. So, um, Ooh, that's, yeah, that's definitely what we're going to be talking about today. I've got some shit that is going to blow your mind. All right. I, I, I have to say without, with warning, <laughs> there's a reason this, this show is... goes up late nights on Saturdays because yeah, there is this... no way the show can go up during the day on like a Tuesday. I like, guess no this way should... in hell that the show is going to be on Tuesday afternoons at two. Like there's no, no this, this show is this episode in particular is going to get real filthy real fast. Uh, you're going to need a shower after this episode. Actually, probably you're going to need a shower and a therapist after this episode you, because we have yes. some terrible stories. You haven't uh, heard mine. Why don't mine. you kick it off, my friend? Why don't you give us the first one? Uh, I'm going to start out tame because Miley Cyrus told me it's okay. So okay. I'm, I'm going to start out with a tame story. So back in the day, and before I got married, and, and by the way, I am married. We're both married. Uh, not yes. to each other, but we are married. <laughs> I well, like I, I don't know. You might be my work wife. Not without trying. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I think Ashley's like, <coughs> he, might be my, he might be your work wife now. Oh, fuck. I just, uh, got, a, I just got a logo sent to me in video form. I just kind of had a... I, oh, so, sorry, I just, I just splooged it a little right now. Swing. Okay, so before I got married, this is way back in the day. This is like 2010. Okay, so <laughs> a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, twenty long, mi- long time ago, twenty miles from where I live now. Um, so I was living in Walnut Ridge, and it's a small town in Arkansas. And to let everybody know how big of a town it, um, it really has nothing, nor is it on a ridge, nor does it have walnuts. So it's kind of just a misleading misnomer. But uh, I was on a website called Plenty of Fish, and. You know, when you move to a new town, that's like one of the only ways you're going to meet people is through like dating sites and shit like that, especially when you're new and you're just trying to put yourself out there for the world. So I've learned a very valuable lesson in life is that number one, if someone messages you, don't plan on meeting them after two messages. (laughs) Because that's how this story starts. So somebody messages me while I'm on the app and I'm like, oh, cool uh sh- you know like what are you doing nothing i'm i'm sitting here it was saturday night so i'm probably watching cops reruns i'm not gonna lie so it's like i'm probably i'm watching cops reruns what are you doing getting ready to start a movie you want to come over and watch it with me well fuck sure all right so i haven't been out of the house in like four days at this point mostly because i'm high and i'm don't want to move because i'm lazy so i mm-hmm. decide and she only lives with like four blocks from my house Via walking trail, which really is not that far of a walk for anybody. Correct? And it's not that bad of a walk. Yeah. No, it's really not that bad of a walk at all. But it's 105 degrees outside. I'm like, 
And, and oh I, yeah, so then it becomes like the longest. Yeah, it's, walk it's, ever. <laughs> it's like a, it's a fucking Lord of the Rings movie when it's that fucking hot outside, and it's it's a hundred and like six degrees. I don't know if Chicago heat's humid, but Chicago I heat gets it gets very very humid. It is like it's, like right now it's unbearable and it's not even that hot outside. I like to refer to our heat as sticky ball heat because like your balls will stick to the inside of your leg. I don't know how else to put it. fucking ball heat. Yeah, it'll just stick to your leg, and then when you try to move your balls off your leg, it'll rip off like Velcro, including making the sound. Like, it's the exact... Like, if I had Velcro, I would demonstrate, but I don't have Velcro because my shoes are nowhere near me. And so I'm, I decide to go, and it's this four, blo- four to six block walk. I'm like, I'm, good. Yeah, I'm hot. I'm sweaty. Shit's sticking to me. My fat rolls are crying out and help. Uh, so I get there and I get inside and I meet her roommate who's weird. And so I meet her and she goes, Hey, how are you? We hug. And it's just like the world's smelliest hug. Like I know how I smell at this point. I smell like the back of a foot locker. Like I know I smell terrible, but whatever. She's she, we're going to watch a movie. Mm. So, she goes, what movie do you want to watch? Because I had something planned. And this is rule number two I've picked. This is, this is rule number two I've picked up. I will never watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show spontaneously ever again. Is it because of this story? Uh, this is one of three reasons of why I will never watch the... I had like th- I had my first one night stand after a midnight showing of Rocky Horror that I went to at the last minute. I with a girl dressed as a sailor and then like it happened again and I ended up watching Rocky Horror and I ended up shirtless in an Arby's parking lot. I don't I still don't know how that one happened, but whatever in like three like a town three towns away, not even in my town, but like in a town that's like 30 miles away kind of situation. Okay, Mm -hmm. so. I get there and she offers me something to drink because she sees that I'm hot, I'm sweaty, and I am not going to be happy if I don't get something in my system that will quench my thirst. However, she only offers me two drinks. Drink number one is, well, Kool-Aid. And I'm I'm 30, well, at this time I'm in my 20s. I'm in my late 20s. Do I look like I'm going to drink a fucking kid's drink? Like, no. Like, I'm or my other options, water. Kids drink it is. I'm taking the fucking Kool-Aid. So she comes back in like one of those like souvenir glasses that you get when you go to Beale Street or like fucking the street in New Orleans. I can't think of the Oh, uh Bourbon Street? Yeah, like it's one of those glass. It's like one of those fucking take home glasses that you drink a fuck ton of booze out of. Just full of red Kool-Aid. And I'm like, I'm gonna be sick. But I am thirsty and I need this. I start chugging that motherfucking Kool Aid. Like, by the time I'm done, I know that my belly is going to puff up. I could break through the walls and go, oh, yeah. However, <laughs> oh, yeah. However, it, it gets really bad here because halfway through, I realized that this is not just Kool Aid. This, this is Kool Aid mixed with vodka. Oh man, she dosed you. Yeah, she fucking put like and I mean it so you know those souvenir glasses can hold a fuck ton of drink. Oh yeah, they can. It held almost an entire fifth of vodka. God damn, she was trying to get in your pants, but not the nice way. So I don't you know, I finish it because I'm like by this point I already know I'm fucked. I don't drink mm-hmm. a lot to begin with. I know at this point, I am boned. So, Rocky Horror Picture Show starts. The lips come on, and I'm sitting on the couch with her talking. And, and the next thing I remember, the last thing I remember from the movie, is when... You've seen the movie, right? Oh, yeah. Plenty okay. of times. So, it's when Frank Inverter brings Rocky to life. Mm-hmm. And he's running around... Uh, Frankenfurter's laboratory. That's the last thing I remember. The next thing I remember is waking up. 
Okay, so this is where this shit gets good. It okay. is it is it is four forty in the morning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So hold on, let me backtrack. Time frame. Bit. It is like ten o'clock when I get there. So it's ten o'clock at night when you get there. Yeah. You're she offers you this drink that yes. she she doses you basically yes. without telling you. You drink a couple drinks. You the last scene you remember watching before you pass out is Frankenfurter coming to life. Yes. Or Rocky coming and to life, yeah. Rocky, that's what I meant. Rocky coming to life. And then you wake up and it's suddenly four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Well four four. Okay, but yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's at four forty in the morning. And I wake up to go to the like I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Cause like I feel like I just need to go to the bathroom. Okay. I turn on the light to, to walk into the bathroom and there's something weird on my head. Like, I'm not thinking anything of it, because I'm like, oh, maybe I just got, like, it, you're so out of it, you don't realize there's something on your head, but you feel like there's something on your head. Like, I feel like I've got either a headache coming or, nope, I'm wearing a children's plastic firefighter hat. I'm not making this up either. There are. No, I, I, I am I speechless. Not to mention... That's not the only thing I'm in. So I think twice. I pull off the firefighter hat. I go to the, like, I'm in the bathroom now with this firefighter hat in my hand. I realize that I'm not wearing my clothes at this point. Okay. I'm wearing her prom dress. Huh. It is 440 in the morning. I'm in a firefighter hat in a prom dress, and I have no idea where the fuck I am. I know the town I'm in. I don't know if I can make it home. Like, it is a very scary situation. So I start wondering because I need to find my pants. I find my keys, but I have not found, I couldn't find my pants or shirt. I'm like, well, son of a bitch, what do I do? So I go to the kitchen because I'm like, I'm going to get some water. I'm going to try to figure this out. And there's a 24 pack of Pepsi sitting on the floor. And I'm like, God damn motherfucking son of a cunt. Why the fuck did I drink the Kool-Aid if this was here? Like I was pissed because anybody who knows me knows I will drink Pepsi like there's no tomorrow. And the next, like, I don't know what to do at this point. So I said, fuck it. I put the firefighter hat back on. I fill a backpack full of all 24 goddamn Pepsis. So you fucking stole her Pepsi. I did, and I just took off. I was like, <laughs> fuck it. I'm going back home. I'm over this. I don't know where my pants are. I don't know where my shirt is, but I've got my keys. I can get in the house as long as... And I'm living with my dad, like my biological dad. The only thing I'm thinking is like, as long as he doesn't see me come in the house, we're okay. Lucky for me, he had to work. <laughs> but so he wasn't home when you got home. But I had to walk home in the prom dress and the firefighter hat, carrying this backpack full of sodas at 4.40 in the morning. Which, granted, you know, I'm going down the walking trail. At least it was dark, and it wasn't like that semi-light where, you know, all the runners are out. Uh-huh. But, yes, there is a... But I still have the prom dress. You still have the dress? I still have the prom dress, yeah, because when people tell me that story's not true, I decide to bust out the, the dress. I, I, I bust out the prom dress and the backpack I stole because the backpack's like for some factory that's in that town. Yep. Hmm. So that that's a tame story. I've got one. I'll start off even more tame than that. Um, so my, this is, I can't remember the timeline specifically because this is a long time ago. Uh, but my friend Marty, uh, who is, was one of my, is, I guess you could say, even though we haven't talked in a while, is one of my oldest friends in the world. We've known each other since we were freshmen in high school. And uh, he started dating this girl, Chrissy. She's a nice girl, not totally my cup of tea, but she's she was good for him, and that's what mattered at the end of the day. 
her and I kind of butted heads on some stuff, but she's a good girl. She's good for him. She made him happy. That's, you know, really ultimately all that matters. Um, and there were, you know, he was, you know, you know how you get when you start dating someone new. It's exciting. You want to spend all your free time with them. Oh, yeah. It's like the like greatest thing in the world. In that doggy, the doggy puppy love kind of phase. It's just the greatest experience of the world, blah, 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 whatever. So, like, him and I would hang out, like, two or three times a week. Like, we'd go to karaoke. We'd, you know, every Wednesday we'd go get, you know, uh, chicken wings at, at Hooters and just kind of sit there and bullshit. <laughs> We had our rituals. We were hanging out a lot. And then she started coming around, and I noticed that our, our hangout times kind of started sort of dwindling. And I wasn't mad at him at all because he's, you know, he got this girl that he likes, and she likes him, and it's very happy for my friend. So I did, did bother me. And then there was one night that it did. We, were, we went to this bar in our neighborhood called Trojanics, which is like a whole hole-in-the-wall, you know, bar like it's just like total like run down like not run down and that it looks like shit but it's just like it's where all the old people go to drink and kind of be left alone from the modern world <laughs> so we were going there because marty's uncle does karaoke there and drinks are super cheap as like dollar draft bottles like it was insane so we would we went there on a saturday night and you know i got out of work at the time i worked at Coles, and he's like hey man you want to meet me up at trojanics Told him, like, I just got off of work. This is probably around, like, 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Let me get home and uh, get changed and showered, and I'll meet you there. And, and he's like, cool, I'm, I'm already here. Uh, I'll see you when you get there. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is a little, caught me off guard a little bit. So I get home. I change, shower in that exact order. Put clean clothes on. Then I jump in the shower. And then I'm out the door. Because you had a hard day working and I get fucking coals. <laughs> <laughs> and I get there and he's waiting outside for me, which is weird because he never does that. And so like some bells are going off, some flags are some red flags are getting raised. And he's like, I'm like, what are you doing out here? And he's like, he's, I'm like, are you smoking now? He's like, no, I'm just hanging out. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I know there's something going on. Turns out he invited this girl, Chrissy. And I'm like, oh, God damn it. Like I wasn't really upset, but I didn't want to sit there and be the third wheel. I really was tired, and I just kind of wanted to have a couple drinks, sing a couple karaoke songs, and go home. I didn't want to be the third wheel to the two of them. Um, and they could sense that. They could sense, because I wasn't really participating in their conversations. I was just kind of sitting there drinking and just playing on my phone and just not really giving a fuck. And then uh, she turns to me. He goes to the bathroom, and she's like, are you single? I'm like, Yeah have been for quite some time now and she's like i got uh this friend i think you you, you might want to meet and i might and i i mean she she might have said it differently i'm probably okay first of all how does she like, know you want to meet the friend already like you, you have you ever talked to this girl before this moment like a couple of times but she i mean marty is uh she does she did come to a couple that like i didn't personally talk to her but marty she has seen me and marty interact like she would come up to our karaoke show so she's been around before so she kind of has i guess a general idea of the type of person i am plus i had really long hair back then and a really fucking bushy beard and i wore like nerd shirts so i, I like i looked like a prototypical slacker nerd i wore sandals everywhere like, I was listening to fucking ska music all the time. Like, I was your pretty typical fucking... So she, you could look at me and pretty much gather what type of person I'd be into. I bet that dude bathes in yeah, X-Body spray. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she's like, you know, I got this friend. She's cute. Uh, you might be into her. I don't know. Like, I could set something up. I'm like, uh, uh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I wasn't really... I was kind of more still mad that he kind of invited her out without telling me. Like, if he would have just told me, like, hey, I'm bringing Chrissy out, too, I wouldn't have been as upset. But the fact that he kind of didn't tell me that she was coming out really didn't piss me off. But it was just like, I don't want to be the third wheel, man. So I had a couple more drinks, and then I left. I'm like, I'm out, guys. This is fun, but not really. <laughs> so I, I bounced, and I went back home. Flash, you know, flash forward a couple weeks. Uh... 
Chrissy is up at the, the bar that me and Marty used to be. We used to have Marty has his own karaoke company and I used to work for him. We used to run karaoke shows, this bar in our neighborhood called Cullen's pub. Yes, yes, yes. Before you even make the reference, I make twilight jokes about that place all the time. I'm Batman. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. So I, I, you know, with flash forward a couple weeks and I get to the bar, Marty's running the show that night. I get us a bucket of beer, just sitting, drinking, having a good time. Our friends start pouring in. Chrissy comes in and she has a bunch of friends with her. And then Marty shoots me a look. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like he, like he's telling me her friend is amongst these people, but he didn't, he wasn't, he wouldn't tell me who it was. Like, why the fuck? He's like, I just want to, he's, he was teasing me more than anything. He's trying to make me sweat. And so I wasn't really having it. I was like, I don't think I want to be set up by your friend because your friend is okay, but I don't like her. I could not see myself being with her. So I could only imagine the type of people she associates with. That's typecasting. So I, I know it's typecasting, (laughs) but whatever. I was at a point in my life where I was looking for a very specific woman. Is it like I had a type and I was going to accept no substitutes. And if she did not fall within those parameters, I didn't want to be with her. I knew what I wanted. I was very specific about what I wanted. If I had to wait, I was going to wait. So I'm outside talking to a couple buddies. We go out because there's like an outdoor smoking grotto kind of area out in the back behind the bar. And um, so I'm out there talking to a couple of buddies. You know, we're bullshitting about video games and such. And this really like the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful women I had ever seen in my life up until that point comes out. She's probably, she's probably like four and five foot. Exactly. She's short. She has short fiery red hair. Like it literally looks like her hair is on fire. It's so red and so beautiful looking. She's got glasses on like buddy Holly rivers, Cuomo glasses. And she's wearing some kind of, math nerd shirt and i'm like what is this in my head but in my like i'm still carrying the conversation with the two buddies i'm out there with so i'm trying to like play it off like i'm not noticing this girl and my buddy like turns around and he whacks the beer out of her hand and so in like imagine that moment where, like, you know, you were telling your story earlier about uh, on the previous episode of when we were doing live about how you were seeing everything in slow motion as you crashed into the yeah, bush of yeah, thorns. Yeah. This whole thing played out in slow motion for me because I see him turn around and he whacks the beer bottle out of her hand because she's talking to her friends. They were like, the group, the grotto is not huge. So if there's a lot of people out there, it's kind of close quarters. So when he turned around to go back inside, he whacked the beer bottle out of her hand. And I'm looking. And I see it in super slow motion, and I hear this operatic music in my head playing like, like this is my moment. And, and it, I swear to God, Richard, before that beer bottle even hit the ground, I was inside already buying her a new beer. Wow. So, like, I go in, and I, buy, I just went in, I bought her a new one, I came back out, and she's still, like, surveying what the fuck happened. And I turn around, I'm like, here you go. And... I she I uh, handed to her and she's like, "Oh, thanks." And then we start talking, and I'm really into it. I'm really into this conversation. That's some we shit. Kind of spend the rest of the night. That shit uh-huh. only friend. That's some shit only friends would plan out. Like I'm gonna hit the beer out of her I hand. I swear to God. So like, I mean, he didn't do it on purpose, but it was like out of a romantic comedy. It really was. So we start spending the rest of the night talking to each other. Like, that's it wasn't even like forced. We were just like back and forth back and forth and back and forth and then it's like 2 30 in the morning the bar is closed you know like it's the type of neighborhood bar that even though they close at two like they stay open for another extra hour and a half for like the regulars to kind of just hang out and have a couple drinks before they have to kick everybody out for real so we're all sitting in the bar and we're playing darts and having a good time and then i gotta go because i got the morning shift and it's like fucking four o'clock and i gotta be at work at nine I didn't want to go because I was having such a good time talking to this girl and we were just vibing each other so hard, but I had to go because I had work the next day. So I said like, Hey, listen, can I get your phone number? 
I have to go. I got work in the morning, but I would really like to keep talking to you. This is the most fun I've had in a while. And she says to me, she's like, yeah. She was like hesitant to give me her phone number. And I, I thought, which was weird because it felt like we had hit it off so well. She's like, I'm not really interested in dating right now. She's like, so I don't want to give you the wrong impression right off the bat. She's like, I like you. I think you're cute. And we got a lot in common, but I just kind of don't want to be in a relationship right now. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I tried my best to play it off. Like I wasn't stung a little bit, but boy, was I fucking feeling it. So I grab her phone number and I put it, you know, into my phone and I leave. Thinking to myself, well, I'm never texting her. (laughs) Fuck that. So then I go to work the next day and I'm tired as fuck because by the time I get home, I'm too tired to go to sleep. So I just sit up and I watch like the critic or some shit. And then I go to, you know, I fall asleep for a couple hours, go to work. I start work at nine. I work till like five, but then they ask me to stay late. They ask me like, Hey, can you stay another like couple hours to like eight o'clock? You know, someone called off. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I stayed till late. I get home. And when I working at Kohl's, they have this like dress code where you have to wear, this is where the story starts to get good. I'm sorry. It's been a long one. We we had so, to sit. We had to go through all of that just to get to Cole's story. Awesome. You know they're taking Amazon returns. That's I like I to do. I like to do setup. I'm sorry. I <laughs> oh, like I'm gonna to give setup. you one. You're just gonna be like, what? All right. Continue. So on. I get home and I'm wearing these nice, like, kind of, and sort of burnt orange dress pants. I got a sweater on. I'm just real nice, and I'm feeling kind of bummed out because I'm still reeling from the kind of sort of rejection from last night. And I go into the fridge, and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? I'm going to eat my feelings away. So I get a pint of, like, Ben and Jerry's fish food ice cream. I get a bowl of Crunchberry cereal. Uh, I microwave some French fries, and I grab a box of Reese's Pieces. So, like, I'm really just all over the place right now. And I'm sitting there. And I'm watching TV in my room. Nobody's home. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking jerk off because like, I, I want to fucking rub one out. So I – and I just like unbuckle my pants. I'm not the type of person where I'm going to get like – there are people out there who get completely naked when they jerk off, and I don't fucking understand And those people that. bother like, me. Like how can you take huh? off – and those people bother me. How can you take off everything just to just do like seven tugs? Dude, I don't even take my pants off. I unzip, I unbuckle, I do like the seven pumps, and then I put buckled back up, and I'm back on my way. It's so even there, it's I even worse. Pants. Just really quick, it's even worse when they light the candles. Oh my god, dude! Just just yank your just yank your balls, or give, give your balls a tug in the in the letter candy parlance. Yes. Um. And just go about your day. Like, it's, it's jerking off. You're not, like, you know, making love to yourself. You're fucking tugging one out. Just let it go. So I'm laying in bed, and I got all this food surrounding me. And I fucking am, like, I got a bowl of cereal with crunch berries to my left. I got a box of, you know, Reese's Pieces ice cream. On my, and I put it all aside, and I lay there, and I just pull up something on, I, on the internet. I don't remember what it was. I unzip and I start going to town and I leave my phone on my chest and it starts vibrating right as I'm about to blow my load. And I, and I like freak out and I pick up the phone and I trap myself and I shoot my load right into my bowl of cereal. But what is up with you and cum? I didn't like, what re- is this about? You're but, just like, I just want to eat cum. But <laughs> I didn't know that i did that until after i went to go get a bite of the said cereal what kind of cereal was it crunch berries and the call was you know the postscript to the story is the call was from marty saying like hey i talked to uh chrissy her friend Britt from the other night Uh, i'm like wait a minute wait a minute that was chrissy's friend that she was trying to set me up with Oh, and, you should do like, that. Yeah. <laughs> and then she and and he's like, yeah, she wants to go. She wants to meet you again. She wants to talk to you. And then she lived all the way out in Bridgeport, which is by Sox Park, which is not at, at 11 o'clock at night 
is not a close enough drive for me to just go sit and talk to somebody. Like either I'm gonna go and get my fucking dangle tangled in some some you know some bush, or I'm just not gonna leave because it's fucking eleven o'clock at night. So I you know she I go and I meet her and we sit there and we talk we go to a bar we drink and we decide that we're really into each other and we start dating. So it was just kind of like that's the postscript to the story, but the. That whole build up was to I jizzed in my own cereal and ate it without realizing it until I took a bowl I took a spoonful of the crunch berries and I'm like, hmm, I didn't realize that they made crunch berries with garlic salt. Oh, why does it taste like garlic salt? What the hell? God. I'm Italian. Preparing, for, preparing for a vampire attack? What the fuck? Like shit. <laughs> Sorry for the long build up to that, but I just had I had to set uh, the stage for that. All right. Uh, I'll tell a story that's never been told on anything uh, magazine-related ever. Okay, let's hear it. Way back in the day, and this is like my very first serious relationship way back in the day, we mm. were having some issues. Like, a lot of issues. Like, okay, we, we, we were on the rocks. Like, we knew this was not probably going to work, but we're going to keep trying because we are fucking stupid. By the okay. way, this is the only X that I can, well, one of two X's that I have not talked to since the breakup. So I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm doing okay in life about that because I can still talk mm-hmm. to my ex-wife and, and we're fine. This is my ex-fiance. I've never talked to her in almost 10 years. That's how bad this is. But we decided to, we, we got, she looked at me one night and went, have you ever thought about having sex with other people? And I went, no, I'm in a relationship oh with you, God. dipshit. But we, we started talking about it a little bit more. And over time, we decided to try swinging. Oh, that's, that never ends well, I feel like. Well, uh, swingers relationships are like as a whole much like uh-huh. more stable than traditional relationships. If you look at numbers, like there are less divorce rates among swingers than there are, but but you I feel like both people have to be committed to the lifestyle and not just one. So, one night we decided to meet another couple. Uh-huh. And and I don't know how to feel about this. I'm like, oh, "All right, well, let's do it." So, we live in a small town in Missouri. An hour and a half away is a big town, and uh, the town is Springfield. And they give us their address, and we this is the time. This is like predating GPSs, GPSs for all of you. Uh, this is this is predating like being able to get from point A to point B easily. Like they were available, but they weren't available to us yet. <laughs> Us normal people, right? Like they were too too yeah. expensive for us to afford at that point. So we we go and they tell us where they live, and it's like, oh, they live in the shitty part of town. Oh fuck! So they live in a house that has a hole in the front, not not just the door. Like it actually had a hole, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. Like in the ground, like in the house, like okay, so like in the floor. No, in the fr- like in the, the side of the house, there's a hole covered with the tarp. When we get there, we see something come flying out the fucking window. Oh my god! They've been fighting all night long, and it's like, oh, this is what the fuck did you drag me into? I'm gonna die here, aren't I? So I decided the only way I'm going to get through this evening, the only way I am going to be able to brave this is through something I like to call booze. And <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's Mike like this liquid is, courage. This is before I really got into beer. So this is in the time frame of mm-hmm. just learning that I enjoyed beer. So it's a lot of Mike's hard lemonades, hypnotic, vodka, you know, the the usual. And by the way, vodka, hypnotic and orange juice mixed is fantastic. So I ended up drinking two fifths by myself. This is the most I've ever drank in one night until I got married the first mm-hmm. time. So I, this is the only way I can handle this. So we meet the couple for the first time. I've never seen a picture of them. She did it. 
She's the one who fig- helped picked out the couple. And we walk into the house. And it really was like the guy, like, you know, your typical stoner, I, you know, probably doesn't really work out, but he's kind of ripped. Like, you know, he's on some sort of drug here, but, you know, whatevs. Mm-hmm. The girl, on the other hand, <laughs> I don't want to say this to be mean because I feel like I will get hate mail, but I'm cool with this. But, like, <sighs> I feel for me to have sex with someone, I have to be somewhat attracted to them. That's just how it works for me. Like, I, and that's not just a physical. It's kind of how it works in general. Well, I feel uh, like. It's, it's not a, just a it's not unique to you, buddy. right? But it's not just a physical thing for me. I also have to be attracted mentally. So okay, like I think I'm a term like in terminology, I'm a demisexual. So I, I I have to be like attracted to them in both ways, and I'm not attracted to them in either way. Does that does that help the situation? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. No. I mix. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah, like I, I mean, honestly, I had a full like I had a goatee at the time. She probably did too. So, oh, like I mean, it's like I know now that that's not like I, you know what it is, but like she's she's super hairy, and I'm like I, I don't know how I feel about this. Like I'm not into this, but all right. So I get like, is she like sprouting up the sides of her legs and shit? Kinda like it was just kind of a hip, <laughs> it was like a hippie vibe kind of thing going, and I'm like I don't know how to handle this, so I get completely shit faced, and sh- they end up so my ex fiance and the guy is in one room just boning like hell, like you could hear it, and I'm like okay I'm in the other room and instead of having sex this poor girl is crying on my shoulder. Because she's like heartbroken. Why? She's heartbroken. Because he's fucking your your fiance at the time. No, they. they she caught him cheating. Which is, but it's not cheating. No, like actual, like she. He was sleeping around with somebody and didn't tell her. Like in swinger community, you, oh, act- you see that's. It, 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 yeah, no, I get where you're okay. coming from. Like it's a weird situation to talk about. Like it's like in the swinger community, you. You you're supposed to tell your other half that you're sleeping with someone else. Like that's supposed to be respectful if you are sleeping with someone that they're not there with. Because most of the time, most swinger couples will have sex together. Like they will be in the same room. Okay. I don't. I, it, it's weird. I, this is a lifestyle I will never get back into. So, so they're 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 going at it. Me and her, we we start kissing, and. That liquor hits me. Hard. We both passed out. But uh-huh. I'm not going to lie to you how we passed out. Because there was no sex between... Well, okay, I take that back. We started to, and we both fell asleep while having sex. So I'm technically inside of her, asleep. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's funny. And she is on, like, we're not, like, you know, the side position. Like, she's got her legs wrapped. Like, honest yeah. to God, she's asleep, and we, we, I have penetrated, but we are out like a light. And she's just, like, super comfortable. So they go back into the other room and start having sex again, which woke, woke us both up. And she goes, I'm done. And she goes, I like it was the weirdest situation ever. So, I it's not really the worst sex story, but it's one of those stories that has the weirdest ending ever. I'm I'm riveted right now. Please continue. So the sex was, yeah. So they we decide she wants to do this again with the same couple. All right. Okay. All right, let's do this. So we go back to the house. The hole has been patched up. However, there's a police car in front of the house this time. And they got into another domestic. And I'm sitting there going, this is not fucking worth it. So all that gets taken care of. We're sitting in their living room. 
they have incense burning, which is look, this is the general definition of the word hippie right now. I, I am in what would I believe a urinal at Woodstock would smell like. Jesus. It is the worst sex experience I've ever had because this one girl is just crying on me constantly. The other two are wanting to be like rabbits. I'm here. I don't want to be here. So in the middle of it, I decide I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling anybody I'm leaving. I let the three of them get shit faced. I pretend I'm drinking straight vodka. Bitch, I'm drinking water. (laughs) Because I know where I'm at. Like this time, I'm like, I'm not letting this shit happen. I'm not falling asleep with my ding ding and someone else. I'm not happening. And I <laughs> dingy ding my dingy ding. Uh, I'm not falling asleep with little Bilbo and someone else. And it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> so I call up my friend and I'm like, dude, I know you live in town. How fast can you be in a certain spot if I tell you where I am? He's like, where are you? And I I tell him. He comes and gets me. He's like, what the fuck are you doing there? I said, uh, do you want the honest to God truth or no? And he goes, probably I don't want to know. I was like, that's probably safe for every party involved. So my ex, so me and him go back to his place and we just get shit faced. <laughs> like I am, we, we both get drunk because I'm in a safe environment this time. I'm not like, I'm not going to randomly have sex with someone random at this point. It, it's just happening. Mm-hmm. My ex does not call me for two days, by the way. Two days. But uh, the happy ending to this story was, one, we ended up breaking up like a week and a half later. Two, I can tell you the way I sobered up enough from the first experience that made me realize this was not the situation for me. So she has sex with this dude, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and she doesn't brag about it. She doesn't really talk about it. But she started having sex with multiple guys at home. Like it went from, oh, we're going to swing to like doing with the couples to I'm going to start having sex with anybody I want. That's when I knew this was over. So I found out through a mutual friend of ours that she started cheating. Jesus Christ. Yeah. But the night I got drunk is how I found out because the friend texted me and not her. Oh. And I went, okay, well, this is fun. So, hey, baby. Hey, baby. Want to fuck? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and, and it's like this big burly biker dude and not the Sunset Anarchy biker dudes. I'm talking about the biker dudes you find on Grinder, And... Oh. Like we're we're talking full on bear. Like we're one step away from this dude has stealing picnic baskets. Like that's how bear we're talking. And it gets worse is like the whole time. Like I'm just thinking, well, now she's having sex with this guy and this guy, and I'm like, I'm having sex with practically nobody. What's the point of being in a relationship? And I decided I'm going to end it while sobering up eating cheddar biscuits at a fucking red lobster with the other swinging couple. Yep. That's that is in. Yeah, we tried swinging and it was interesting postscript. Yeah, no, it's the red lobster cheddar biscuits is what I realized. Now I can't, I haven't been back to a red lobster since that moment. Okay. Because I don't think I, I can. Love. Oh man. So like, did, did, has has this ruined the cheddar biscuits for you? Uh, yeah. Like, like I mean, it's not like cheddar biscuits. Like, I love it. Like, yeah, no, it reminds me of the swinging incident, and I'm just like, I don't know if I can have red lobster now because it, it it'll sober you up. But I'm like, this is really weird to me now, and I can't I can't do this. So, but yeah. Uh, she actually ended up marrying someone she cheated on me with too. So let's let's throw that out there. Fucking hey, Jesus! Yeah, it, that's a uh, long. Okay. That, so that's I a fun. That's a one. that's a story that has not actually been told. 
So that day. How many of these stories, right. by the way, are I we doing? Well, but really quick, how many are we doing? Because I got like maybe how far are we into this episode already? 45 minutes. Jesus. Uh, I got two more I could do. Okay, yeah, okay, that works. So one this one, and then one more after my big one. We'll we'll do two big ones at the end. And, okay, we're good. All right. Okay. So this first one, um, I will uh, I will call like this. So I I worked at Target for a little bit for like two or three. Coles and Target. Oh my God. Yeah. You're one step away from having like a strip mall book it button. <laughs> so I worked at Target for two or three years, and um, there was uh, during my second or third year there, there was this girl who was working at the customer service desk. Her name was well, her name, we'll say her name was Sherry. We're gonna say Ronald McDonald. Go. Yes, and uh, she was um, she's a little bit bigger. But she had very beautiful eyes, and she had huge, huge, huge tits. Like, oh, my God. And I'm a boob man. I love big boobs. So I was sold. Boobs. But she was kind of like, she was kind of fucking nuts. Like, she she was like very, I don't know how to describe it. She seemed nice, but she's. She's very forceful, or she like she's very. I don't know. I'm I'm escaping. The word is escaping me, but she's very upfront. I guess I blunt. And her and I would talk, but blunt. There you go. That was the word I was looking for. She's very blunt. And so, like when I worked at Kohl's, I was the uh, area manager for their electronics and entertainment section. So, like the movies, video games, music. That's you were the area manager for like two rows of. Like two half rows of stuff. I've been to Coles. No, I was in for the whole back half of the store because I managed the movies, the books, the CDs because we still sold CDs at the time. Uh, video games, all the electronic, like all the electronics, all the sporting goods, and uh, half of the toy section. So I had a large portion of the store that I was in charge of, but it was in the back corner. And the customer service desk, so the front corner. So I didn't really to interact with, like the front service girls a lot just like when i would come in and when i would leave or when i'd go on my lunch break um but she was there um and we would i'd always say hi and we'd always kind of like talk and shit and she was always looking at me like she always gave me this weird look that i was convinced like she wanted to like skin me and eat me in a sandwich is the only way i could describe it that is the exact and i never knew how to take someone. that so one night, like I would typically work mornings because all the managers and department heads had to work mornings because that's like, you know, whenever there were like floor changes or we had to implement, you know, new product coming in or anything, we had to be there. So typically we would work mornings, but sometimes, you know, I would be like, they would ask me like, Hey, can you stay or can you come in and work the night shift? Cause we had some call offs or we have like big planogram changes. We need you to implement. And I was always like, you know, I was like 19 at the time and I didn't, you know, I wasn't going, I wasn't, you know, old enough to go out and drink. And most of my friends kind of were working too. So I didn't really have much of a social life during that period of time. So I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll make some money. Why not? So I come in and I work a night shift and she had apparently, uh, she came, I came in and the night shift for Target was like, from like two in the afternoon to like midnight. And, like, I came in and I said, like, oh, hey, Sherry, you must be leaving soon because typically she works the morning. Uh, she worked the early morning shift with me. And she's like, no, I actually uh, switched my shift so I could be on this shift tonight. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. That's cool. like the equivalent she of somebody. Said it just, that's the equivalent of somebody changing classes mid like semester just to be in the same class as you. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm going to go to work. I will see you around. So I clock in, I grab my schedule, you know, I do my daily meeting with the store manager, blah, blah, I go through the whole rigmarole, I get back there, and it's business as usual, you know, nothing new there. And then right around like um, 10-ish at night, because we were open, we stayed up until 11, so right around 10, 
usually the store would get like super empty. Like the customers would just kind of like, there'd be a few stragglers here and there, but like it was pretty much like largely empty. And we would typically have like a lot of, if anyone's ever worked retail, like if you ever work in like retail setting, you've got to face or zone or like make sure all the products look you know, like straightened out on the shelves and shit. So we had all that crap done. So for that last hour, typically we would either just bullshit around and play the video game demos, or we would just sit in the office and fuck around until we had to close the store. And then uh, one day I was sitting in the office at my desk and Sherry comes in she's like, Hey, uh, can I get your help with something? I'm like, yeah, sure. She's like, like, I need some help, uh, on the dock because uh, one of the, uh, one of the jobs they had to do while they were there was they would have to like, if there were like returns that were unsalvageable, like some like say someone returned something and we couldn't like sell, like the item was broken or the vendor box was broken. And we just couldn't replace it. We would, you know, damage it out in our system. We'd throw it out and we'd get the credit or whatever for it. Right. And they had to bring those back to the dock where we had like the trash compactors and like garbages and shit. She's like, can you help me with this? I need because it's too heavy for me to lift. And it wasn't necessarily wrong for her to ask for help because the electronics department was in the back half of the store and it wasn't too far from the dock door that led to the area where all the garbages were. So it made sense. I didn't really think anything of it at the time. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll help you. No matter. No, no big deal. I'm all done. So I go back to my department. I meet her. We get the trash. We go. And then we're walking back there. And she starts. Like she's like gets in between like I'm pushing the giant like bin that's got all the trash and she's like walking up next to me and she's like here let me hold the door open for you and like let me let's say like imagine this when you're opening the door for somebody you hold it open you kind of like you walk up to it and you hold it open but you're like chest out right right you, you like you, you like you imagine the visual like if you're standing there you're holding the door open you're not standing with your back to the person you're standing with you know, you're facing them on the front well she was standing in the back and she was angled in such a way when i walked past her her butt was like all over my shit like all over my shit it was not subtle i'm like oh, 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 okay okay that's cool yeah it's cool it's a nice butt whatever i'm saying this to myself and then we're walking in and she's like uh let me grab that for you and then she opens the cage which because like this cage like pulls up we would load the bin in the the machine would like take the bin, raise it up, dump the, all the trash and crap into the trash compactor and then bring the machine down. And then we'd pull the bin out. So she raises the, the gate, but she does it in like, you know, a typical, like, you know, sexy pose way or whatever. Ooh, sexy pose. And it's just it, like, it just was not subtle. Like I absolutely got the message she was trying to send. And so we finish up and everything. And she's like, Hey, what are you doing later? I'm like going home. It's fucking like close to midnight. She's like, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, well, I work till five and then I have a couple days off. She's like, you want to go see a movie? And, uh, I'm like, all right. Yeah. What do you want to see? She's like, you know, I want to go see that new Shrek movie. I'm like, Oh, I don't really have any desire to see Shrek. It's Shrek too. Like, we're not going to be watching the movie. It's stupid. Shrek. It's Shrek too. Isn't it? No, it was Shrek the third. Oh no, no, you're right. It was Shrek too. I knew it. I fucking knew it. It was Shrek too. You're right. She's like, we're not going to be watching the movie. But I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I was dumb to what she was trying, like, at that stage of the game. Donkey, you're getting like, a hand job. Shrek, you're getting a hand job, Shrek. <laughs> so we we go to the movie, and, you know, we are making out, and I'm feeling her up, and she's feeling me up and everything. We go back to her house. and At a kid's movie. She's like, at a kid's movie with kids in the audience. It was pretty insane. Um. Then we go back to her house and we start fooling around and we stop just short of actually doing it because I hadn't yet done it with anybody. So I stopped short and whatever. So then, you know, this is kind of like how our friendship slash relationship carries on for the next couple of weeks where we go, we hang out somewhere, we fool around, we stop short, just short of sex, but like we do pretty much everything else you can do. Um, and then one day I invite her over to my parents' house because like, it's kind of sort of like starting to get a little serious. Like we're actually considering being like boyfriend, girlfriend, 
like you know like the, the other stuff is like kind of feeding into actual feelings for each other <clears throat> so i invite her over, over to my uh parents house and she meets my mom my mom likes her everything's great we eat dinner we go into the living room to watch tv my mom and dad go hang out in the basement because they know i'm probably going to make out with this girl they don't want to see that shit and so we do we start making out like any boyfriend girlfriend do but then she starts to unzip my pants and pull me out like she's gonna go down and be like whoa 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 i'm like not not here like my parents are home they could walk in like i'm super nervous about that she's like come on they're downstairs i promise it'll be quick I'm like, don't worry i'm that good i'm like i know you are i just am extremely nervous about this i don't want my parents to walk in and i'm like not that I don't want the blowjob, I just don't want my mom to walk in on me, you know, nutting down some girl's throat. So and she's like, what do you want to do? She's like, I, I, I got to do this right now. I got to like, she was definitely the aggressor in that relationship. And not that I didn't enjoy being physically intimate with another person. It was just like, it was almost kind of off putting how aggressive she was about wanting to do that stuff. If you if you can kind of understand what I'm trying to yeah, say, I get where you're coming from. Like I didn't, I didn't not enjoy it. It was just like the level to which she, I don't want to say pressured because like I gave into it, but the <laughs> level with which she wanted to do it was just starting to get kind of border on like, all right, this is a little much for me to handle right now. But I went along with it because I wanted to my dick sucks. So we're like, all right, well, what are we gonna do? About this? I told her I'm like, well. My block, if you go a little further down my block, there's like a dead end street that leads into like a, a factory kind of area where there's like a lot of uh, like a professional park where there's like a lot of buildings and factories. People go to work and late at night there is or not late at night, but earlier in the evening, there is, you know, nobody there because everyone left for the day. Like an industrial park is what I meant to say. So... I'm like, let's just go find a spot over there where there isn't anybody and we can just fool around all we want. So I tell my mom, like, hey, mom, we're leaving. We're going to grab a bite to eat. We'll be back. She's like, okay. So we leave. We go to this industrial park. We kind of drive around. There's some cars parked. You know, like we, I'm trying to find, like, as far remote away <clears throat> an area as possible so no one can walk in on us. And... Um, oh, we Lord. find one and we park and we start making out. We start feeling each other up. She unzips my pants and she starts going down on me and I'm sitting there and enjoying it. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. Why am I complaining about this to myself? Like, you know, yeah, she's kind of aggressive, but dude, you're getting your dicks up. You don't have to go down on this girl. That's awesome. Now, before I get to the holy fuck moment of the story for a little context, I forgot to establish the target that I worked at is in this suburb called Willowbrook. Okay. Which is about a good 35, 40 minutes from where I live. I live by Midway Airport at the time. So it took me a good half hour, 40 minutes to get there. And she lives in Darien, which is about another 10 minutes away from Willowbrook. So she doesn't really live close. and She doesn't have any like friends or family that live in my neighborhood or anybody that she knows. So that's kind of why we would hang out in my area a lot because, you know, if we were going to go fool around and stuff, we didn't want her family and stuff to catch us, but it doesn't make sense. Then why were we fooling? You know, it, there's con right. inconsistencies in the logic there, but when it comes to getting, you know, blowies, who gives a fuck? Right. So we find a spot. We start going at it. Like I said, she starts going, I mean, I'm like, Sitting there with my arms folded by my head, and she is like just rocking my world, and I'm just enjoying every second of it. I close my eyes, and I start to I start you know like moaning like I'm about to come, and then I open my eyes and turn, and there's a fucking squad car sitting right next to us. Whoop, whoop. Like, fuck! And I didn't. The the word horrible part is I didn't immediately tell her to stop. I kind of let her go for a few more seconds because it was just so good. Um. But then they start getting out of the car, and then she stops. I'm like, oh, fuck, the cops are here. And then she looks up, and she pulls her shirt on because she, you know, off. she pulls her shirt up and gets dressed, and she looks, 
at the cops approaching the car and she is like freaking the fuck out like even more so than I am like I'm freaking out because I don't want them to call my parents and tell them like hey your son was getting a blowing in a parking lot down the street but she was like even more freaking out and I couldn't I didn't really grasp why but she was like hyperventilating and shit cop walks up to the car and he looks at me and he looks at her he smirks which is like the greatest thing okay why are you smirking he smirks at her and he looks at me he's like license and registration please so I hand him my license and the insurance card on the car and he's like so what are you kids doing out here and they're like oh we're just uh, you know hanging out just you know going for a drive he's like you gotta knock that shit off I could, go, I could bust you on public indecency, you know. I'm like, well... And then my fucking dumbass decided to argue logic with him for some fucking reason. I said, well, officer, that's kind of why we picked a industrial park, because we figured there weren't going to be anybody around to watch us do it. And he looks at me like, is this motherfucker really trying to argue with me right now about <laughs> the logic behind getting blowy in public? <laughs> You know what makes that even better is I played the. You know what I. You, you're starting to tell the cop story. I started playing Inner Circle behind you, so like when you're getting to the part, uh-huh. the cop walks up to the car. Huh, bad boys. It was great. Continue on. <laughs> what you want? What? Because I know you can't hear that. So. And, and and he looks at me like, is he really arguing logic with me right now? And then he looks at me, and then he looks at her, and he's like, Sherry, Dad wants you home for dinner right away. And then my face fucking dropped. It was her goddamn brother. Her brother is a cop in the neighborhood 45 minutes away from where they live. What the fuck are the chances of that? Holy (laughs) shit knockers. Yeah. So then he pulls away and we pull away and she's like, she's like, hold on a second. And she takes the tops off and she finishes me off. Jesus. And then I take her home. Jesus. Okay. That uh, was the, that was consequently consequently the last time I hung out with her. I was so mortified by what had happened <laughs> that I, I could not like I, I never wanted to see her again. So here's, because that's I oh, I don't even know what to say that. So I've got a, I've got two and I feel like I have to share both of them. Uh, one's short, one's not. Um, All right, hit me. I'm going to do the short one. And if you want to tell your other one afterwards, you're more than welcome to, because I I do feel like mine tops it. My last one is a semi-short one, uh, but we'll see who tops it. So I'm going to start with the short one. Like right after my ex and I had just split, the ex-fiance and I, I decided to get back in the world of Mm -hmm. dating without giving myself any time to heal because I'm dumb. And at the time, I decided to hang out with a friend who helped me get sober, like who I got drunk with the night <laughs> that it all happened. Uh, so I'm hanging out at his place, and I'm, uh, again, signed up for online dating because I had no idea what the hell I'm doing because I hadn't dated in uh, since high school, and that was my high school sweetheart, so fucking hell. Mm. And I decided to post, you know, I'm looking for a girl, and all of a sudden I get this message, and again... I, I, I invited her, like, hey, let's go on a date. And I'm one of those old-fashioned motherfuckers that likes to cook for people and all that jizz and jazz, and that's exactly what I tried to do. So I ended up making, like, an Alfredo lasagna. And, uh, yeah, I can cook, motherfucker. So, <laughs> like, I, I made this Alfredo lasagna and, like, homemade garlic bread. I, I, I killed it. And I get a message from her saying that she couldn't make dinner. She had like an emergency. Oof. And I'm like, I wasn't upset because I was like, oh, this happens. But I have all this Alfredo lasagna. What the fuck I'm going to do? Within the, like 10 minutes of that, I get a message from a girl. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to invite this girl to dinner. Like, why the fuck not? Like, it may never work out. Who gives a rat's ass, right? Mm-hmm. So guess what? And so I'm like, hey, you know what? Why don't you? Why don't we have dinner? I've I've I made like this really awesome dinner. My plans fell through. If you would like to join me, she lived in a town 30 minutes away from where I was. Keep that in mind. So I was like, at okay. least I've got I've got 30 minutes to get myself prepared 
So I'm going back to finish the rest of the meal. So, you know, garlic bread, you don't want to burn because if you burn garlic bread, it just fucking sucks. And I, I'm at the point where I'm like, hey, I can start putting the salad in the bowl and then I can officially 100% prepare for the like prepare myself for this date. About mm-hmm. 12 minutes had gone by and there's a knock at my friend's door. 12 minutes. Hmm. 12 minutes. Conspicuous. So I thought, okay, so maybe it's one of the neighbors that's like, that smells wonderful. What are you making? Because my friend's neighbors are very, like, it was a very, like, happy, it was like a very awesome place to be. I go to look out the peephole, and it's the girl. And I went, ooh, okay, this is, this is intense. So I open up the door, I'm like, hi. I don't know her name. I only know her by her profile name. Because mm-hmm. that's a smart answer, right? <laughs> and I'm oh, like, man. I we start talking a little bit, and I'm like, hey, I made this dinner. Uh, it's by candlelight because you know, again, you're preparing for like I'm that guy. And in the process of this, I go to, I go do something. Like I can't see her. I, honest to God, walk back into the living room. She is standing in the middle of the room Mm -hmm. holding a ring. I want you to know this is within 15 minutes of meeting. Holding a men's ring. Going, I read your profile numerous times. And I am not exaggerating when I say this. I believe you are the one. Holy fuck. I'm standing there holding a plate of food because I was getting, I think I was getting food at that time and I'm standing there going, how the fuck do you get? I'm the one out of my profile. That's just like, I want you to be the Topanga or the Corey to my Topanga. Like, how do you get that I am the one? Like, I I think I was even just, like, honest in my dating profile, which is probably why I only got, like, three messages during that time frame. But, like, seriously? So, yeah. No, she proceeds to tell me that it's her grandpa's ring. And when she found the one, she was going to give it to them. This is all within 30. Um, this is all within an hour of that message. So an hour of the first message that sent, she's already decided she wants to spend the rest of her life with you. Yes. I mean, I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you before I even met you. So yeah, I guess it's not outside the realm of possibility. I don't know how, like, I didn't know how to respond. Like, do I be a dick? Do I go, hey, look, uh, this, this is not how this works. Like, we should date first. We should get to know each other. Or do I just kick her out? I would have kicked her out. That would have been like, psycho. Uh, so my response was, hey, look, um, I, 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 I think you're cute. I know nothing about you. I don't know your first name. I know you by like, you know, uh, like I know you by, you know, Mickey Mouse Girl 4. So here's what's going to happen. I feel you came all this way. I'm not going to deprive you of food because that would make me a son of a bitch. But what I am, not, one thing I'm not going to do is talk to you after this because I'm very weirded out right now. I don't know how to process this. So mm-hmm. now I've got a fun follow up. So my friend who still works, okay. who still worked in Springfield, he knew that like. I sent him a picture of the girl and I said, you know, like, this is who she is. Like, is she, what do you think? And he's like, Oh, she's cute. What do you know about her? I'm like, nothing. And he goes, marry her (laughs) and just joking around. So, but he worked at a McDonald's. Like he was like one of the overall managers at a McDonald's there. And -hmm. about two weeks later, she came into his McDonald's. And he recognized her from the photo. Mm-hmm. 
Like, he sent me a picture of her in the McDonald's going, hey, look, I think this is the girl that proposed to you. Is this her? And I'm like, that's her. She was married already. Like, she in the time frame that she was single, when I met her two weeks prior, it's probably like 12 days, honestly, mm-hmm. to 12 days later, she had found someone to say yes to that. Really? Yeah. Yep. So she got someone to marry her like right away? She did. She got someone to say yes. Good for her. I don't know if they're still together or not. Like I But to this day I never will forget that. Cause dude, that was the weirdest experience. It's like it's one thing to have like a crazy sex story or crazy date story, but when like a girl proposes within maybe 10 minutes of meeting because of what she read, I'm like, yeah, no, we're not going to work. That's you. Did. And that's, like, not, I understand like you're, that's not even my most fucked up story. Oh, I haven't. Oh, uh, honor! Told you my really quick, honorable mentions. I got two honorable. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell the whole story. Honorable mention is one: walking in a thunderstorm, 30 miles for a girl, only for her to tell me that she was married. Mm-hmm. And then number two is moving to another state for a girl, only to have that blow up in my face and end up homeless. All right, go for it. Um, two honorable mentions for me. Uh, first time I ever ate ass, she farted a wet fart in my mouth. I'm sorry about that. But now um, but now for the for the rest of the show's run you will be known as Fart Face. Continue on. <laughs> fart Face McPoop Mouth. Um I'm gonna rename the show to Fart Face and, Adventure Show. <laughs> and one time um I got uh I was eating the girl out and she told me to stop um because she was gonna come, which I thought was weird. And one when she did, I like pulled away, but it turns out she had to piss, and she pissed all over my face. I did not know you were a so, water sports man. Yeah, neither did I until that moment, apparently. Oh, my God. Were you a wakeboarder, surfer? What kind of water sports are you into? <laughs> water polo. Water polo. <laughs> All right, let's let's do it. It is now time for what I believe will be the two craziest stories. Do you want to go first? Because my mine ends up with me in the emergency room. That's pretty good. Um, mine ends up being stranded two my two hours away from home. No, mine ends up with me in the emergency room getting stitches in my wiener. Ooh. I kind of want to hear yours first, only because I know, <laughs> only because I know my story, and it's like now you've got me intrigued by your wiener story. Because I'm not going to give you the details of mine because it's just all fucked up. Like it's it's one of those stories where everything goes wrong. If it mm-hmm. could go wrong, it did go wrong. Other than that, my dick didn't get broken. So I mean, there's that. Oh, uh, man. Well, it's entirely up to you. Do you want to go first? It's not a super long story, but it's a super okay, my, graphic story. Mine is really long, so okay. I, I think you should go first because you did tell the story on okay. live of the jizz in the face. Okay. Right. So this is um, get this girl that I was... Uh, dating she's nice um <laughs> she's, she's she's nice she was she was nice like like it wasn't like a relationship that was gonna last it was like two people who dug each other like they both realized like hey this isn't gonna last this isn't a forever type thing but i enjoy spending time with you so why don't we just kind of see each other for a while you know like okay. you, you, you're, you you're you know what it is it's not gonna go anywhere ultimately but you guys have fun while you're together yeah i call that girl mom Get so it's going. kind of a, Oh, Jesus Christ. Way to make it gross. <laughs> so we're hanging out. And um, she, we're, uh, my parents are away. Why does every one um, of these stories take place at your parents' house? Because I didn't... Because a lot of these stories take place like earlier in my... I have to give uh, you shit. Um, days. Uh, the worst story ever, which I'm not going to have time for today. 
I'll say for like another episode or so. Um, takes place in my apartment, but that's neither here nor there. Um, when I first, the very first apartment I ever lived in on my own, not the one I currently live in. Um, so my parents are away for the night. They're out with some friends having dinner and I bring her back to my house and we go sit in the basement and we're, uh, watching a movie. I think we're watching some horror movie or something. I don't know. We're not really watching it. We're, we're like, we started to watch, but then we just kind of start, you know, making out and petting each other and blah, blah, blah. And, um, we have sex and it's amazing. And then when I finish, like, we're both still kind of, like, in the mood. Like, it was, like, weird. Like, I'd never, like, had, up until that point, I'd never had, like, been intimate with someone and wanted to do it right away. I got like, you. Right away again. Just, like, go right back into it. But I needed a break. Like, I'm like, I gotta get a, give, gotta give me a few minutes. I gotta, you know, get, like, you know, catch my breath. She's like, well, do you want me to give you a hand job I'm like, oh, okay i mean i i'm not the biggest fan of those in the world it's like i can give myself a hand job if you're gonna go down there put your mouth on, on it yeah. but she's like you want to give me a hand job i'm like all right cool and she she had never actually given me a hand job before this is the first time she was ever gonna give me one so I, I feel like i need to preface that before you're about to find out what happens next oh, um okay. and when and, and so she like grabs it she's got a tight grip not wholly uncomfortable, but just tight enough to where it's like, oh, okay. She's got a firm handshake. Interesting. She grabs me and she starts pumping. And then and I'm like looking up with my eyes closed. And I'm like, oh, yeah. But then I start feeling this weird kind of like burning sensation kind of sort of. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I like, I start grimacing like, Ugh. and she's like, what's going on? I'm like, I say, and I'm like, oh, maybe loosen your grip a little bit. Yeah, I think you might be gripping a little, a little too tight. Be more smooth. And she's like, okay. So then she grips again and she's going and I'm not paying attention. Like I can feel the pain, but I'm keeping my eyes closed. So I'm not actually seeing what's going on, which is also a very important note to uh, kind of take note of. Um, and I, the pain is getting more and more intense. Like it's um getting it's just it's like it's growing more the pain is outweighing the pleasure at this point but i she's i like her and i don't want her to not be with me anymore so i kind of in typical dude fashion don't say anything i just kind of let her do her thing and then i start to i tell her i'm like all right you gotta stop i'm like can you just like please just if you got to do something can you just like go down on me because this is not painful. She's like, let me try one more thing. So then she does, she goes back and she, I, I acquiesce. I let her keep, you know, giving me the hand jump. And I, when you, when you're gripping your dick, when you're like, like, so let's say when you go on to play with yourself, you take your fingers and you wrap kind of around the shaft so that the tops of the digits of your fingers are resting on your shaft right you don't want to get your nails digging into the skin of your penis i use my elbows well my friend <laughs> nothing i don't have a response to that <laughs> so There's i look down and i'm like okay this is this is getting worse and worse i look down she's digging her nails into my and she is going up and down, up and down. And that burning sensation that I'm feeling is cuts in my wiener so fucking deep that there are several flaps of skin hanging off of my dick. And there's blood everywhere. And I'm like, at this point, I throw her off me and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And like, I can't even stand up straight. I'm like in so much agony. And I can't call my parents. Because I don't want to tell them, like, hey, I was just getting a handy in your basement and my fucking dick's falling apart. You come get me, please. And I'm like, the fuck are we going to do? And she's, like, freaking out and I'm freaking out. And then we get in the car and and, and we go to the emergency room. And it's like, we, I'm like, there's, I'm bleeding and there's skin hanging off my dick. Like, 
you know, what, 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 what would you do in that situation? So we, we went and we go to the emergency room and what's the nature of your problem? And they look down at me and they could see there's like blood all over. Like I have my pants on, but I'm bleeding through my pants. And they're like, Oh, what's going on? I'm like, I had a trouser incident. (laughs) And they're like, that's what I said. Hashtag trouser incident. <laughs> and I'm like, I had a trouser incident, and they're like, "What the incident do you speak of?" And and, and I'm like, "Well, um, my girlfriend and I were fooling around, and one thing led to the other, and I've got several tears on the underside of the shaft of my wiener." And the the nurse looks at me like with a combination of, "Did you just tell me you got a?" hand job from your girlfriend and she cut you and also did you just say wiener to me <laughs> oh my god so i had to fill out some paperwork and i you know went into the emergency room this girl's hanging out they had to call my parents because you know i was still on their insurance at the time oh so you can only imagine how that conversation mr went. and mrs brody so this the- is doctor <laughs> this is doctor feels and stuff at the hospital here I just wanted to let you know <laughs> that your kid's dick was cut by a girl. You know that girl that always came over for dinner that you enjoyed and you even invited her for Thanksgiving? Yeah, you might want to repull that invitation. <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor comes in. He's like, what seems to be the problem? He sees the blood all over my pants. So I have to whip it out. And the doctor, I think, in an effort to make me laugh, was like, Jesus Christ, son, what did you do? Stick it in a cheese grater? Is she with you at this point? No, she's in the waiting room. I'm in the doctor's room. Okay, so you you didn't take her back there. No, you could have. Like you know, you could have, but you didn't. I could have, but okay. I chose not to. Okay, I chose not to. Um, and and he's like, you know, uh, we're gonna have to give you stitches because those are some deep cuts, and you know, we're the gonna have to give you pain medication. You're not gonna be able to deepest. to use it for a while. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead, stitch my dick up, doctor. <laughs> and um, the funny postscript to the story was that when the doctors, when they called my parents, they didn't tell them why I was in the emergency room. They just told them that I was and that they needed to get here right because away. Because they can't wasn't under be law. Right home. Yeah, because I don't think they can under law. Huh? I don't think they can tell them until you approve you could tell them. Right. They, they're they not allowed to tell them why. They just have to tell them I'm there and that they need to come right away. So uh, they get there, but they see the they are in the waiting room and they see my, you know, girlfriend, date mate, whatever you want to call her. And they're like, what's going on? And they see that she's like bawling her eyes out. And she um, tells them what happened. Like she, <laughs> not ironically, not comedically. She just says. I was giving your son a hand job in the basement and one thing led to the other and I was cutting, I was, you know, whatever, whatever she said, I'm paraphrasing her cause she was paraphrasing herself when she told me. So I, I don't know exactly the words that she used when she talked to them. Cause I wasn't there for that conversation, but do you know what a cat, of, she just kind of straightforwardly Mr. And Mrs. Brody, uh-huh. do you know what happens when a cat gets a hold of a carpet? I did that to his dick. That's your son's reproductive organ. So, and they're like, um, what? And so they come into the, they come into the room and they see me there and I've got like, you know, I've got the bandages on, I've got the hospital gown on, you know, a little drugged out of my mind right now on pain meds. And they're like, they look at me and they don't say anything first. They just sit down and they're like, so have a good night. Did you? And like they're like really <laughs> reveling in it right now. Are they trying not to laugh? Because I, I I I don't know if I could. They're trying it. not to laugh, and they they don't know. Like I don't know that they know what's going on. Like what the real what really happened. So they're I think they're trying to like prank punk me or some shit. So they're like, so what happened? And I'm like, oh I uh, you know I zipped myself. Like I went to go use the bathroom, and you know. I, uh, you know, had a trouser incident. I said that twice. <laughs> trouser incident twice in the same fucking night. And one thing led to the other, and I, you know, lacerated myself. And they're like, 
Yeah, he last you cut yourself. He's in your, your trousers, huh? Mm-hmm. He's there, right? And then um, it was just like you know. Eventually, they let on that like you know your girlfriend told us that she was giving you a hand job in her basement. She fucking cut you. You know that's why you're here. And there, and it was just like it was horribly like nothing super funny happened after that. It was just like horribly like embarrassing. Like I did not do anything actually physical with another woman for many, many years after that because I, of the psychological scars of that happening. I, I mean, that. you know, eventually I healed, eventually everything was fine. But then the interesting postscript to that story, the, the interesting tie around to that is that she, the girl that I was with ends up dating a friend of mine, like not a close friend, loose, but like an acquaintance, if you will. Yes. And he's like, Hey, have you ever heard? Have you, did you, he's like, do you know who, you know, so-and-so is? I'm like, yeah, I used to date her back and they kind of came to a violent end, so to speak. But we, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He's like, he's like, was she good? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, in bed, was she like good? Do you have any complaints? And I'm like, no, I don't have any complaints. What are you talking about? I mean, like, I had the complaint, and I proceeded to tell him what happened. Kind of gave him the short version of the story. And and he's like, oh, so you were in the hospital too, huh? Oh, shit. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck happened? And apparently, she was going down on him, she, and she... Did she bite him? Fucking bit she bit some of his fucking foreskin off. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I don't want to mention. I don't want to say any names about who this was, and it's pretty fucked up. But yeah, turns out she's uh, she's a serial uh, dick skinner, so to speak. Wow! Oh my god! Yeah. I, I I I my penis hurts for you. I, I want to know if like this ever yeah. did, like okay. So like on the day of your wedding. Did your parents give like a speech? Like your dad gets up there and goes, you know, I remember that time when your dick was stitched. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't actually have a proper ceremony. Well, I was going to say, has your dad, has your parents ever given you shit for that? Because damn, they are missing out if they don't. The only thing my, no, the only thing my mom ever gave me shit for was like, I'd be sitting in front of the computer and she'd be doing the laundry and she'd be like, God damn it. If you ever jerk off into one of my towels again. I'm going to fucking smack you in the face with it. Don't jerk off into my towels because they're never the same when you do. They're all crusty and shit, and I got to throw them out. Oh, my Lord. This is fantastic. That was like an almost almost monthly conversation my mom and I would have. Uh, fuck. This is great. So, all okay. Right. Yeah. All so right. I, the, the, the serial dick skinner was my final. I it's think not the worst story, but it's I, I the think, most painful one. I think we're going to be. This is going to be interesting. Okay. So this is what I like to refer to it as the night from hell. Uh, my dick didn't mm-hmm. get stitched up, but it it's pretty interesting. So. I, I told you I'm a hopeless romantic, and being a hopeless romantic puts me in situations that I wish I would never have gotten myself into, and mm-hmm. I, I like doing things. I like doing things to make people feel good about themselves. That's part of my job. Like, if I happened to be a nurse when I saw a dude come into the hospital with his dick, <laughs> I'm sorry, with nails that, like, skint his dick, I would have made fun of you, but that's just who I am. But, like, during this time frame... I, I'm I'm in the dating pool. I don't know what I'm doing. And I ended up talking to this girl who lives two hours away. Okay. And I was like, we're hitting it off. We've got stuff in common. We grew up in those... Like, I was born in this town that she lives in. And we may have known each other. We may have not known each other. That's really cool. Let's keep talking. So, eventually, we got to the situation where it was like, it's time for a date. And we need to do okay. this. Okay. So I told her, let's let's do this. Let's go to dinner. Let's go see a movie or go play mini golf. Let's go do something fun. We'll go to Jonesboro, which is like, you know, the metropolis of my area. And we'll uh-huh. do something sweet. All right. So the time comes for a date. And... 
the day is here and I'm going to wear my best nerd t I'm gonna wear my best crappy t shirt and uh jeans. And I in converse, of course. So I'm dressed, I'm waiting on her. Mm -hmm. She does not show for an hour and a half. So that's fun. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Okay. So so she doesn't show up for an hour and a half. So I she she texts me and says, I'm gonna be a little late. I'm sorry. Blah, blah, blah. I had car issues, blah blah blah. All right, cool, cool. Uh, I probably should let everyone know that I have seizures. So that's that that's one thing. Uh so okay, so I'm waiting for her to get there. And you know, most of the times when a date happens, you should be warned of something before it happens, right? Like if something is what do you going, mean? Right, like well, if something's going to go, if something is going differently than what had been planned by the two people, you should at least be warned that there is something happening. Now, mind you, this is now okay. nine o'clock in the evening. There's still restaurants open. We're not like any other small town area that everything closes at two. Like it, we, at this point, it, we could at least go get some food and hang out. Like the movie may not happen, but at least we could eat because I'm starving. She shows up, and I'm cool. Like I, when I dated, I dated women from all walks of life. Like it didn't matter what you did or who, like whatever. But the one thing I swear to God, you need to tell me, is that you're bringing your kids on the date. So she didn't. What? Yeah, she did not tell me this at all. So this is a school. This is like a Wednesday night, by the way. So it's nine o'clock on a Wednesday night. She brings her eight year old and her two year old. And I'm thinking, well, this is fucking awkward, but I can roll with this. So did she tell you did she tell you beforehand that she had kids? Or was yes. this the first no, time? No, you she realized? told me she had kids, but they weren't supposed to be with her. Like she even told me she's like, I'm not gonna have you meet my kids on the first date. Which was obviously bullshit. Well, yeah. So she's like, I'm sorry. My, I've got my kids. I'm like, it is what it is. We we end up talking for a minute. And it's like, okay, so where do you want to go? Like, you have your choice of where you want to go. Kids or not. Like, I'm cool with pretty much everything. And uh, she picks what happens to be the most romantic restaurant if you live in a town of four people. Oh, you can guess this. Uh, uh, the most the most ro romantic, romantic restaurant. If you live in a town with four people. Burger King? Eh, a little bit less than that. A little bit more low scale. Dial it back a little. Church's Chicken? No, that's a little too dial, but I'll back. Uh, dial it up just a little bit. If you're a kid, where do you want to go? McDonald's. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, so, you guys went to McDonald's on your first date. And the kids went and played with the fucking ball pit, didn't they? There was no ball pit at this McDonald's. <clears throat> the fuck? Yep. So we go to McDonald's on a first date. And this is the moment I learned that if I had a choice of going to a sit-down restaurant or a McDonald's, I'm going to choose the sit-down restaurant 99.9% .9 of the time. Because her kids, and I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to have to get two Happy Meals. They're like three bucks each. I'm cool with that. That's what it is. Her eight-year-old ate a fucking real meal. Like, I, I'm not mad about it. But it's like, what? Because, I mean, McDonald's prices for, like, an actual menu, like a value menu item, meal, like the meal... It's like ten fifty. Mm -hmm. Twelve if you get the really good shit. I'm looking at forty bucks on dinner. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like I'm I was gonna spend that anyway, but I didn't expect to take four people out for dinner. So I'm already like, this date's disastrous. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing anymore. And then we go we're we're done eating. We didn't get to really talk much because, you know, she's trying to feed her kids and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. We go back to her car. And I probably should let you know the closest McDonald's that was open 
is a 45 minute drive. So now I'm halfway in between where I live and where she lives. Please tell me she tries to put the moves on you with the kids in the car. Oh, this gets better. So she asked me, what do I want to do? Do I want to just go back home or do I want to go spend the night at her house? Uh, basically, do you want to go home or do you want to come over to my place and fuck me? Pretty much the sentiment. And I was like, do I want to go home now or do I want to go? You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to move this out in my head. Like, what's the best decision for me? Of course, I fucking went with her. So, of course. Yeah, no, there's like, I was probably, I was thinking with the wrong body part. And honestly, it was not my dick either. So I, I was like, all right, I'll go with you. Because remember, we've had all these great conversations. So we're on this stretch of road where there's absolutely not a damn thing. Like, it is all farmland. Rice and corn, as far as the eyes can see. Rice and corn. So we get past a certain point, and she looks at me and goes, I have a black backpack for you in the back seat that we're going to have some fun with later. What? And I went, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. A little black backpack. And she's like, Turn it around. She's on the back end. She goes, I can't tell you about what's in it. Why? Is is there a fucking severed head in the bag? No, that would actually have been a lot better. So she's like, but when the time comes, when the time comes, we're going to use what's in that bag. All right. So... We're, we're continuing the trek. We get back to her house. So I, I've been to some houses before where, like, the rooms are set up oddly. And it, it is what it is. Like, the conversation was fine. Like, after the black backpack conversation, it was kind of like, okay, so that tailed off, and we went back to normal conversation. So it was back to somewhat better than what it was. Huh. She's like, I'm going to go put my kids to bed. Awesome. She takes her kids to bed. She comes out, and... Her kid's room and her room are right next to each other. Okay. But instead of like a normal room pattern where you actually walk around to go into the kid's room, the door is in her room. To get into the kid's room. Yes. But to make matters worse, there's no door. So it's wide open. Yeah. Her kid, any, either one of her two children could have looked in at any time had we had done something at that point. And I really did not want to explain the birds and the bees to an eight-year-old kid. Like, I just did not want that on a first date. So I let that go for a minute. Like, she bought, like, she she had Pepsis. Like, I'm telling you, man, that, that's, a, that's a weak spot. So she had Pepsi. She served, Pepsi. Them, she served them in wine glasses over ice. Girl was living. Girl was living her best life at that point for me. Like I'm like I got. I'm okay with this right now. And then she starts telling me about a like something she loves in the bedroom. And I'm like, okay, I'm cool with this. Let's talk. You know, let's like let's talk sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. I'm fine with that. So okay. she starts telling me that she goes, I got a tattoo that I loved having. I love being ejaculated on. And I went, Uh, all right. She goes, I have photos of it. And by the way, I will find the photo and send to you to prove that this is a real story. Um, Because I still have it in my inbox, in my Yahoo email. I keep receipts of stories. Oh, So she has a tramp stamp? She has a tramp stamp. She likes to get jizzed on on her tramp stamp. Now, normally most women's tramp stamps are butterflies or like music notes. Nope, this girl's trans- just one like a big black veiny dick. No, that actually probably would have been a hundred times better than what this is. No, this is a tramp stamp of a brand logo. Oh my god, is it? What is it? What is it? I will give you a guess. Now, I want you to think that I am in Arkansas at this point. Okay, I want you to think. I want you to think that thought because you're probably going to be close. Is it a fast food one? No, but that would have been really good. Uh, what is it? Okay. I would have, I would have guessed Whataburger. <laughs> so this company, like when you think about farming 
and and you think about like ways to mow your yard this company just screams out americana john deere she has the john deere logo tramp stamped on her and part of me is like i don't know how to handle this the other part of me is i'm not coming on your big green tractor that's not happening here oh gross so i don't know how to handle this this is the worst tattoo i've ever seen because it's faded too like it is a faded john deere logo on the small of this girl's back i don't know like she had not told me that up until this point but after this night i made her send me a picture of it because i wanted to keep the receipt for a moment i've got to see this this picture so i i'm gonna keep going because this is even worse so oh no that happens and i'm just like okay well uh, i can't do that right now like i'm drinking and i just popped like i grabbed a bottle of wine that she had and i just turned it up now granted i don't get drunk on wine very easily and this is like boone's farm so that's not happening (laughs) so again like everything goes back to normal for a little bit every conversation we have goes back to oh my god you're into this I like that band too. I didn't know you were a wannabe rapper. You know, shit like that. Like, it's just free conversation constantly all the way down. And then the little black backpack emerges. Uh huh. And this is the moment that I realized I need to stop dating. Oh no, this is going to be good. So she's standing there. She looks at me and kisses me on the cheek and goes, I, uh-huh. think it, I think it's time to explore what's in the backpack. I'll be right back. So to go to the bathroom, because she, she went to change. She went from her bedroom, through the kids' bedroom, through her parents' bedroom, which I did not know was there. Until, Wait a minute. She did, yeah. She didn't live on her own? Nope. They're all wow, the story's just getting better and better. All three rooms are connected. So here she goes all the way to the back, like to the bed, like to the bathroom, realizes that she has to uh-huh. walk back through her parents' room with whatever's in this bag. So instead, she comes back through and goes, I have to go a different way. She goes out her like the bedroom door into the major part of the house and then goes to the garage to change. So now I'm sitting on the edge of her bed, two and a, two hours away from home, wondering what the fuck have I gotten myself into? Like at this point, I was yearning for fucking Kool Aid and vodka. Throwback, and I was just like, I need something weird to happen. Like I just need to get out of this situation. Like I'm gonna tell her I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna do this. I'm I'm gonna try and figure out a way out of this. Brody, I shit you not, this girl like opens the door to the bedroom. Because her bedroom, like the main door to the main part of the house, actually had a door. The bedrooms didn't. Like her kids' bedroom didn't, but the parents' bedroom did. That so weird. there so there's no interior doors. Except for one. Just yeah. Like okay. her parents' interior door was there. The kids' interior door was not. I shit you not. She comes back into this room and I'm looking down. Like I cannot look up. Like I don't want to look up. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I don't know how to process. And so she comes back with the black bag. She comes back and I start to pan up and it's again, that slow motion pan where you don't know what you're getting yourself into. And all of a sudden you look up and there's this woman standing there with a pacifier in her mouth, wearing a bonnet, holding a bottle, and wearing an adult diaper. She Ooh. she dead faces me and goes, I believe we could be each other's babies. Like, she's not nope. bullshitting you. Like, nope. this is a legit... This is a legit fetish for her. I just don't know what to say. I am speechless. 
It is probably the most awkward. So t- that's what was in the bag. That's what was in the bag, but there was there was two sets in the bag. Because not only did she buy a set for her, she bought a set for me to wear. So you guys were going to bone dressed as babies? That's what she wanted. That's what she wanted. Yep. I did not know how to handle that. I don't know how to process that. I told her there was not enough liquor in this world to make that happen. And, uh, yeah, so she's standing there and like, she's trying to make moves on me wearing the diaper. Uh, dude, I did not know what to do. Like, I'm like, do I kiss this girl back? Is this, this is weird, right? Like, this is a little awkward. Like, I'm not knocking people who have the fetish. I get, I get why you have the fetish, but like, I'm not like at this point for me who had no idea this fetish was in her head wheelhouse, like who had no idea this girl was into diapers, is sitting there telling me, wearing a diaper with a John Deere tramp stamp, just barely peeking over the top of it. And I'm just like, I don't know how to handle this shit. I, I, I'm not Southern enough for this, I feel, at this point. Like, I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> this, is, this is just I wouldn't know what to do either. So, um... I decide to do the one thing I don't do. Ever. Dress up as a baby? <laughs> yeah. So the moral of the story, kids, is I put on the diaper and I lived with it. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I started faking having a seizure. It's the only time I've done it. Because I was ooh, like... Ooh. I was like, I gotta get out of this situation. And there is no feasible way I can be like, look, I want to go home and her take me home because I tried. So you faked a I seizure. Fake, I, well, I didn't fake it, fake it, but I was like, I feel one coming. I need to go home. And so I'm not like I'm trying to not feel well, but I'm also trying to process the fact that she's still wearing the diaper. She gets dressed through this whole ordeal. She yeah no she she's she's still wearing it after I say this like like for this is probably an hour after her putting it on she's still wearing it she how is going to get her kids up because she can't leave without her kids I come out of her bedroom to realize that her bedroom her parents bedroom also has a door and they're up this is like four this is like five o'clock in the morning now five or six. And now I have to meet Uh, her parents. Please tell me her parents have the same fetish and they all do it together. No, they don't. But her parents was like, so who are you? What do you do? You know, like asking me a hundred thousand, like, you know, the the typical parents questions. And I'm like, your daughter, Uh you're, you're, you're like 27, 28 year old daughter right now is wearing a diaper around you and you have no idea this is happening. You said that to them? No, but I God, I wanted to. Like, your daughter's wanting to pee herself right now. Like, at this point, in that diaper. Like, I know this is what's about to happen. Like, mm. so <laughs> she she gets the kids up, she gets them dressed. We're out of there. I'm 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 now sitting in the car. I don't know if I can say anything at this point. I don't know what to do. I'm like, do I tell her bye? Mm-hmm. Do I give her a hug? Is she going to continue wearing this diaper on this trip? What the fuck do I do here? So it's the most awkward two-hour car ride I've ever had in my life. Nothing is said except we're listening to music. You can hear the ruffle of the diaper. Like That's about the only two things you can hear. So she's still wearing it. Oh, yeah. No, she wore it the whole trip. Like You can hear the sound of the car. You can hear the music playing faintly, and you can hear this rufflage of a diaper. I want. I have so many questions. Shoot. Like, why? That was her thing. But, like, what possesses somebody to be into that sort of thing? Okay, so to understand. Like, why uh, was she. To understand the AD uh, BL fetish. Uh, or A B L E L D B. I don't know. Uh, whatever. However, it's to understand the adult baby fetish. It it 
it's where like an adult wants to regress and not have the stresses of everyday life. Like it's just like to oh, have so the it's a easy, psychological thing. Yeah, it's a psychological fetish. And wow, I think that's like the most like intuitive we've ever got on the, any show. And and it's like I get <laughs> like I get where she's coming. Like I understand why she has the fetish, but part of me is like you can't spring that shit on our first night of ever meeting each other and tell me no. uh, like hey baby, let's wear like hey, I like you. Will you wear a diaper for me? Like uh, what? Like excuse me? Like say what? So it it happened. I never put on the. Okay, so needless to say, she gave me the black backpack to think about it. No, I don't have that. I was like, I'm trashing this shit. There is no way now. I'm taking this inside a house. Like, nope, this is it. So she she drops me off, and I'm just like, as soon as I I, I wave bye, you know, I'm like bye. <laughs> Hope I never talk to you. Yeah, you know, under my breath, I'm like, I'll never talk to you again. Uh, I just kind of, after she's out of the view of driving away, I just kind of sat in my driveway and tried to process the fact of what just happened. What the fuck did I just get myself into? Uh, it's the first time I went to a Catholic church because <laughs> there's a Catholic church right across the street from where I lived. I was like, how I, many baths or showers did you take after that? Uh, I went immediately in, hit the shower, and just sat and cried. Like I didn't know what else to do. Like it was just like REMs playing in the background. I'm like, I don't know where the fuck. Everybody Daddy hurts. Uh, I feel like if I if Justin Bieber would have been a thing there, and that's what I, I would have played, baby. But I, I it was just like baby, baby, baby. Oh, I just I was like, what the hell. So, follow up. So, we were friends on Facebook for the longest time, like three years after this. And she decides she's moving away from the town she lives in and decides she's going to move to Texas. And in that time frame, she actually found somebody. That shares her fetish? Yep. Because I got a picture of it. Oh, well, she wanted to say thank you for not judging me because I I never said a word to her. Like I I never said the word to her. Like I'm like you know I'm gonna tell this story. Like you have to know at some point I'm telling this story to somebody at some point. And I, she knew, but I was like I'm not gonna judge you because of your fetish. But it's still weird to me that you sprung that on me on our first date when that. Like, if you would have just been like, let's just bone, I probably would have. But nope, you asked me to come on a freaking John Deere tramp stamp, and you asked me to wear a diaper. Yeah, no, that is not how first dates While go. bringing her kids Whatsoever. on the date. Like, why didn't you just go get a hotel? Like, why couldn't you just ask your parents to watch the kids and, like, let's go get a hotel room? Like, I would have been, like, that would have been a smarter answer. Like, there's so many things to make you go, oh. Oh. <laughs> why, God, why? But, yeah, that, that's my, uh, that's my story. That is what I like to refer to as the Twin Peaks of dates. Oh, God, yes. No. No, no. After watching Twin Peaks, completely understand where that is now. Yeah. Completely understand. That's, that I would have... I don't know if I would have been upset had I experienced that. I would have just been like, what the fuck did I just experience? You know, it, it, to, how I explained it, like, I never got upset, but it was like, I feel like this is what would happen if I ate shrooms. Like, I feel like this is what yeah. would Yeah. Like, this is what would be the trip I would take if I had shrooms inside my body. So. But that that wraps up that story. Well, then. I feel like that is going to probably be the capper on this show. I mean, I can't imagine. That's going to be the diaper on this one? <laughs> it's going to be the diaper film bow on this episode. Um. <sighs> wow. That, I mean, like, it's not like, I think a running theme between the two stories is yours were more awkward and weird like Twin Peaks style and more <laughs> mine were more like 
violent <laughs> bloodshed. Right. You know, no, your yours is Game of Thrones and I'm Twin Peaks. Like that's the difference here. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. <laughs> Fire in blood for sure. Um, wow. That this has been an interesting episode, I have to say. I've learned something. I've learned some things. I don't even know how like yeah, um, no. We, Dick stitches. <laughs> oh no! For the rest of the life, for the rest of the like, I think the title of this show might be hashtag trials or incident. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like it might be, <laughs> it might be just trouser incidents part one. Did you have that? On? <laughs> oh my god! Because I mean, it's a late oh, night. Me. So. I'm laughing so hard I can't even breathe. Oh my god! So yeah, that that's gonna yeah. Uh, what do we have another? What's going to be our next topic? Have we decided this yet? Do we know? Um, I want to like I want to talk about I want to talk about like streaming services. Let's do it next uh, next show st- <laughs> streaming. I want to talk about talk about streaming services and kind of go into like streaming TV shows versus you know cable network TV shows and things of that nature and just kind of especially with you know Disney. Plus coming out and Netflix and then all this other all these op- options. I kind of want to like go into that a little bit and see how that's talk about how that's kind of changing the landscape of televised entertainment. Let's do that. Streaming services next episode of the Brody and Richard show. I don't know how long it'll be. It might be two weeks from now. I don't know. I, I think this one this one's got a simmer. I think this one needs a <laughs> 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 Hashtag trouser incident. That's exactly <laughs> like it might not even be the symbol. It might actually be spelled out. It might just say hashtag trouser incidents. Like it may be just that dumb for me to go. Yeah, that's probably it. Oh man, uh, is there anything else you want to add before we? Uh, uh, go if you ahead enjoy and this, mosey sh- on down the old dirt. Road? If you enjoy, th- <laughs> hold on. Did you just say mosey on down the old dirt road? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Why? Uh, I don't know. So before we take our Getting house, or before we take our horse down the old town road, uh, I would like to let everyone know to check out the store shop tbk tbk magazine dot com slash shop tbk. And by the end of the week, you will have see Brody and Richard show t shirts as well as tbk live uh, striking a chord and all the other stuff. I uh, go there now. It's all set up. It, the store is actually set back up. You can get <laughs> shirts through magazine, radio, and nerd culture. Not to mention, you can get uh, cups and nutsies. So. Do so, Shot TVK. Sweet. Uh, um, well, I think that's going to do it for the Brody and Richard show. Richard, thank you for joining me and sharing mm-hmm. your uh, your uh, war stories. The butt fuckery has ended for today. <laughs> the, 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 uh, and now our butt fuckery has ended. Um, <laughs> M-I-C, we, um, see you real soon. <laughs> K-E-Y. <laughs> Why? Because we love you. M-O-U-S-E. Uh, oh, God. All right. B U T T F U C K E R Y. That's buttfuckery. I'm going to come All right, folks. Well, thank you for tuning in. I've had a fun time. Uh,